Hey everybody, how we doing? That's outstanding, glad to hear it. That's a lovely, beautiful day. All right, what do we got? Today we're gonna to talk about Zool, my wife's Jeep. Yes, her name is Zool, after the dogs of uh, Ghostbusters. Shout out to Ghostbusters, more fans. Okay, history of our Jeep. She is almost four years old, has 36,000 miles, it's a pavement princess. She gets serviced every time she needs it. She uh, is babied and well taken care of, okay? So, like most Jeep, eater, Jeep owners, we get surprises. The surprises that we got were both rear sensors, speed sensors had to be replaced. The battery had to be replaced um, due to malfunction. Uh, we had electrical ground issues. Um, found that, found the grounds were actually starting to corrode, which was causing a problem. Uh, put some film lube on it, and everything's good since then. Uh, on top of that, we had the infamous left-hand door leak, which if anybody owns a Jeep knows that the floorboard gets full of water, and you could fish in it if you wanted to on a real bad rainy day. There's nice little repairs out there that work. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. Um, then we'll keep moving forward. Uh, the AC drain modification, I did a video of that, of what I found that worked perfect for us So when we're driving down the road. Uh, the problem was is if we were going about anywhere from 30 to 50 miles uh, on a hot, humid day, we would hear the sloshing noises inside the uh, AC area. Uh, found out what it was was the way the tube is it gets a venturi effect basically blocking the water until you stop and then it drains it all out but if you're going on a long distance drive and you're not stopping it's gonna show up and you'll hear it sometimes it just depends on the Jeep uh, each Jeep is in it, its own individual enigma okay now we had the uh, infamous Penstar no we do not have we clean our engines good uh, before we uh, assemble them, uh, what happened with us was my wife was overheating, or not really overheating, but the fan was constantly running, and we didn't really know why. I plugged in the Altel that I have, and live data was showing temperature, you know, but the fan was kicking on, so it was like, okay, um, what could be? So I started checking around and saw in the overflow of the uh, um, radiator that there was a slurry amount sitting at the bottom. When I mean slurry, I mean it was like a clayish, nasty soup. So we took it down, had it flushed. They had to do it twice due to the fact that they saw still stuff coming through on the first process. And then when they did the second, they were like, okay, we don't see anything. Do you see anything? No, we're good. Okay, no, move forward. All right, now we're getting up to speed. Here's where the fun begins. So I'm on the road. My wife turns around and says, I think uh, I'm due for an oil change. I was like, okay, just take it down to local Firestone, get it changed, we'll be fine. Okay, no problem. Um, I know some people might not like Firestones. Hey, you know what? Each shop is its own. If you don't like the shop, go to another shop. That's all I'm going to say. Um, with that being said, she got it home and noticed it made a real weird growly noise. Not like gears grinding, but just the engine Ooh, kind of thing. Okay, so anyways... I said, okay, when I get home, I'll check on it. So I finally get back a couple days after it was done, go out and listen to it. Yeah, it sounded a little like the engine was running a little higher, a little, little faster or something. Best way to describe it was just, it sounded like it was just growling. <laughs> so now um, I checked the oil, did everything. No, there was no problems. Um, didn't see anything, no code spinning, none of that. So then I get done with it, and that's where we're to today. So a few days ago, my wife was driving home, and then all of a sudden she gets this code pop up. She does the trick with the key, and she tells me the code. I look and research the code, and come to find out it is for a short circuit in the oil pump. So I was like, okay, well, there is hardly anything out there on the web about P06DA. Uh, there, there's a few things, but not really too strong. And a lot of it's in the Dodge side, not in the Jeep side. So I was like, okay, well, everything's kind of like pointing towards that. But then I started reading other people's stuff and what they were saying was, oh, if you change the oil or if you check your filler neck or you check your, 
oil filter, make sure it's in there, make sure your oil filter assembly is healthy, make sure that you're not leaking on the manifold, make sure this, this, this. Everything was fine. There was nothing out of place, no oil anywhere that shouldn't be. So I was like, okay, fair enough, we got a problem. Um, did more research. I spent a lot of time researching, and I'm not lying. I mean, anywhere from the first, the first time when I was told about it was in the afternoon. I stayed up until way into the mornings. I got up the next morning, did it again. And then on research, I started seeing that there were two other heavy codes that constantly show. Well, those codes were not the ones that I was seeing. And that is a P06DD and the P06DE. The DD is where the solenoid makes it stuck in low, low oil pressure. And you can't get above 3,500 RPM and the engine goes into limp mode. The DD, or the DE, excuse me, the DE is stuck in high, really no change comparison between it and DA. So it's high pressure. The only way you really know is if you go up into your instrument and flick down to your oil pressure and it's pegged out to 99 because it can't go to 100. That's great. You can't really tell the pressure unless it's in between 0 and 99. Uh, oil pressure when I checked it through that was fine when I did it with the Altel it was fine um, but in the Altel I had three different oils I had engine oil pressure oil pressure oil pressure VVT now I'm, I'm not gonna get into the VVT uh, just not gonna because I want to make this short and to the point okay so I had actual engine oil pressure on there saying that it was 35 I had the VVT saying it was 35 but I had zero in oil pressure alone so after doing a little bit of checking and everything trying to find it it wasn't working out so I did some more things and then people were saying well it's probably your sensor I'm like okay let me go look so I did a whole bunch of research behind that on the P0520 the P0520 is for the oil pressure sensor that sits underneath the uh, intake and on top of the manifold attached to the oil cooler okay so here you go you have the top of the engine the actual base of the engine um, where the air manifolds are okay dead center is where there's the oil cooler and off the back of the oil cooler is a temp sensor and the pressure sensor okay to get to it you have to take off the upper and lower air intake assembly put that to the side and then it sits right there but to get to it you need a long uh, 1 and 1 16th inch deep well socket you got to be very careful because also on top of that the inside of the housing is prone to stripping for people to go ahead and if you get in there and start taking it out or the person who was there before you reefed on it and jammed it in there so did all the research definitely was not it um, behind in the descriptions you will see that there is a 10-step process I remember that I used to track it all back down towards showing me that it was the actual engine oil pump okay so without wasting your time if you see the P06 DA DD or DE you might as well go ahead and gear up for the actual oil pump being replaced the get the oil pump is fairly simple. It's um, you can go anywhere and get it. Usually you can get it in two to three days. You won't get it in two to three weeks or a month. Um, it's very common because the Pentastar, the 3.6 liter Pentastar engine, is used by Dodge, Jeep, and Chrysler in their all different variations of their vehicles. So it's actually a common thing. If you read about it and go hunt on the web, you'll see that it's a very common thing. Now, with that all being said, luckily we were under warranty. The five-year, 60,000-mile warranty covers the oil pump, so we were kind of, but there's other parts in there that it's not covered, so we're kind of in and out of, we're out of the old warranty and, and not going to get into it. So we're probably going to have to pay something. I don't really know. I might put it in descriptions as an update, just to let you all know exactly where we stood. But warranty-wise, luckily it was covered. Now, what's the actual cost? The cost could be anywhere from a thousand to twenty-five hundred. I mean, not twenty-five, to about thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars. Um, the pump itself is only uh, one hundred seventy-five to two hundred fifty dollars. Then you have to get the special seal. The pump assembly comes with a brand new solenoid. 
if you get and wanted to buy just a solenoid and keep the pump in there the solenoid you can get anywhere from about 65 to 100 bucks um, and an actual when I say this these are actual Mopar parts okay so to do the job to replace it you have to drop the lower pan and the um, upper pan of the oil system or the oil tank basically the bottom section of the engine has to come out now to do that um, it's time consuming just because you're trying to separate the upper pan from the engine housing uh, unless you got big long bars and you're whacking the shit out of it to get it out of there you're gonna be there all day you can't just sit in there and just start prying down like the old school days the sealant or the the epoxy or whatever they use is really strong and it's made to stay there and not leak so with all that you turn around you kind of look at the job and if you want um, you can do it I mean if you're mechanical inclined knock boots go ahead I personally was going to gear up and do this the only thing that stopped me was the warranty when I noticed that we were still way under I was like she's going to the shop she's getting checked and everything else is going to be done by them now in closing what I would like to tell everybody is remember what I said don't waste your time constantly doing the research of it don't put it in the forums I mean use the forums and everything before off go ahead and use all the forums and everything but the thing is is don't get so hard driven and focused in on it because I'll tell you it will wear you out and if you get the P06DA DD DE you might as well start looking at what you gotta do and that's the oil pump just start going in and researching how to replace the oil pump on a 3.6 liter Pentastar engine uh, each depending on the configuration I mean these are front wheel drive engines these are also normal on the Jeep Cherokee the air intake is in the back on the Wrangler it's up from the front so you're gonna have to work around certain things of understanding how to do it take each one learn something if you want you'll work fine alright this is Trav I hope the video helped you I hope it keep you from getting overly busy and stuck but you have a great day and I'll talk to y'all later